Good morning, and it's a pleasure to welcome you here to the Canadian Music Centre in Toronto. Uh, we're delighted to have pianist Yoko Hirota back uh, from a very successful recital at Friday on Friday evening from Bunker Lane Press. She's here this morning to present uh, a lecture uh, presentation with performance on six Usheptis, and she'll tell you a little bit more about those, those pieces. They were written for her uh, by Canadian composer Robert LeMay. First, I'd like to acknowledge that we are meeting here today on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Mendat, and the Haudenosaunee peoples, and that today Toronto, uh, as a contemporary city, is home to many other First Nations, including the Inuit and the Métis. We've had a terrific weekend here at the inaugural Composers Symposium, uh, welcoming six uh, brave young artists who have written six new world premieres that will be uh, performed tonight, all for solo piano at Bunker Lane Press at 7.30 p.m. Please join us if you're in Toronto's West End uh, at 1001 Bloor Street in the back alley, just uh, two doors behind Bloor Street. Uh, come on in, tickets are still available. And if you can't be in there in person, find us on Instagram at the Piano Lunaire, and we will be live streaming. Please join me in welcoming Yoko Hirota. Thank you. Um, because I play a uh, lots of uh, contemporary piano music, I'm often asked, how did you gain such weird piano techniques? And my only answer is, well, I'm married to a composer who writes this weird piano music. <laughs> so today, I would like to talk about the set of six pieces called Six Ushebtis, which could clarify some of the uh, problems and the solutions of contemporary piano techniques often associated with uh, atonal music. Six Ushebtis is written by Canadian composer Robert Lumet. As I said at the recital on Friday, Robert teaches at the Laurentia University, where I also teach, and who just happens to be my husband. So title of the piece Six Sheftis refers to little antique Egyptian statues, like this. There are 365 of them uh, for each coffin. And then each day, this Oshepti would supposed to protect this, this person. So the piece was actually commissioned by me. And then I have been teaching at Laurentian since the year 2000. And because I play a lot of contemporary piano music, my students became interested in contemporary music. And then asked me if I could suggest a piece at their level. Then I realized that most contemporary piano pieces are difficult, that they require high piano skills, as well as special interpretations with which students are not familiar. Thus, I had to twist my husband's arms and to create short pieces, particularly intended for students' level. So there are six pieces in the set, as I said, and the pieces introduce the young performers to the new techniques of the piano and various aspects of interpretation specific to atonal contemporary music. So by studying these pieces, young pianists prepare themselves to move forward to the established contemporary repertoire. So the first piece So this is the first piece, that just the first page, there are two pages. The first piece, as well as the third piece, employs no time signature, which was one of my specific requests. This is one of the areas of contemporary music that often intimidates students. In fact, this entire piece is a continuation of a steady pulse of a quarter note, for example,
whenever the piece should not sound metronomic, it needs to create atmospheric sound of repeated bass notes in the pedal. In addition, the piece emphasizes mostly mood or ambience. There is no melody or even a chord. This atonal aspect is also one big fear of students in contemporary piano music. However, the piece is simple and small ornaments that you heard bring effortless complexity into harmony. So this is the entire piece. For the second piece, let me just go. One of my requests to the composer was that he uses the inside of the piano, not too extensively, but to produce specific musical effects. This piece has been quite a success with my students. When six of my students play the pieces together at the recital, they all wished they were assigned this second piece. They thought that it was cool to stand up and pluck strings inside and make weird sounds. So anyhow, in the first bar, you can see the little bell sign on the top of the note. So um, as the composer indicates on the bottom of the page, these notes are played on the keyboard while the other hand presses the string with the fingers to, to make a harmonic sound. If I demonstrate, just. So I'm pushing this uh, string of the D, and then I'll do this. Right after you press, and then you release your finger. If you keep pushing, um, sorry. Just that, so you have to Release it right away on your left hand. Also, there's a zigzag sign uh, in the second bar on the G. The instruction on the bottom of the page says, scrape the string vertically with fingernail. So this is the, so that's a C. So usually I use the second and the third fingers and in between that the, um, I'll go like this. So that's the easiest. So again, you have to keep holding this one while I'm doing scraping. 
And the instruction um, in the seventh bar, if you can see, that's the this one. So this one that uh, there's no note indicated, as you can see, and then only the eighth note rhythm and the sign pits in that bar. So instruction here is to pluck strings with fingers inside the piano in high register. So in fact, any notes, you just, and then you need a pedal. Holding the pedal. That is it. The third system shows another special music notation of a square note. Can you see these square notes? That's the E sharp, F sharp, G, A flat, which in uh, those square notes in contemporary piano techniques indicates that the keys should be pressed down silently. So um, like this, I'm pressing E sharp, F sharp, such, such, that. And when the left hand notes are played, the pressed key respond and bring about the harmonics like this. See, you see the harmonics, that the one that I'm pressing. In addition, <laughs> the third bar from the end is a harp-like uh, glissando inside a piano. So again, you have to press the pedal, and then you go. So notes are free, that the any notes you can pick. And the last bar has the sign X. You can see the notes, instead of the notes, sign X. And the instruction from the composer is to strike a crossbar of the harmony board with, with the hand. This seems awkward at first, but the um, effect is quite remarkable. Again, press the pedal. So hopefully this one. And then that's also the part of the, uh, the piece. So these all seem very strange to young pianists in terms of classical piano techniques. However, these contemporary techniques are not developed just for the sake of looking peculiar, but so as to produce new dimensions of sound from the piano. I would like to play the entire piece, but uh, because it, has a, it needed a lot of preparation, so I would play the one that I recorded on my CD. So this is the entire piece of that. Oops, sorry. Just a minute.
Oops, sorry. <laughs> Here we go. So that was the second piece. The third piece, it's on the screen. Um, this shows a rather different approach. The composer has exquisitely fabricated one of my requests, which is no strict rhythmic structure. The piece, therefore, explores time. Some eighth notes and the 30 seconds notes merely need be counted. Some diagonal lines in the stems, which is like this or like this, um, indicates that the notes are played faster towards the end of the motif. The piece is simple with one idea and technically not difficult. However, respecting the dynamic variations is vital to producing the special color of the piece. So this is the entire piece. Exercise, which is often required in highly technical contemporary piano music or even 20th century messian. In this piece, however, the counting exercise is assembled for beginners. The entire piece can be counted as one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, as the 16th notes as one. In other words, bar one should have um four counts of one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, because it's in a four, four time signature. If I slowly demonstrate the bar uh the first two bars with counting, it will be like this. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. So this is slowly, you when you practice, you slow, uh, slow, you take the slower tempo. So this counting exercise is further elaborated by throwing in three, four time signatures and two, three time signatures throughout the piece. Another element of contemporary piano technique is to give a pierced accent with forte, a la Bartok, so as to produce a new percussive sound from the piano. In this piece, the composer indicates with accent with dot uh, in bar two, bar four, five, seven, eight, uh, you can see. And the result is quite an impressive energetic outgrowth of sound device. Let me play the first two systems of the piece. Well, actually, I'll play the whole piece that uh, just after. So. Um, this piece is in a sort of ABA form, 
And the middle section B is constructed by longer notes, note values, such as a half note and a whole note. The B section gives the performer a little break from counting so exhaustively for eight bars. So entire piece. <laughs> The fifth piece is an exercise for getting comfortable with all ranges of the keyboard, especially the highest and the lowest extremes of the keyboard. Often established contemporary piano music freely utilizes the entire range of the keyboard, like the, the pieces that I played on Friday. This causes some beginner performers to have a timid reaction to it though. And I purposely assign, for example, Brahms piano pieces to first year university students because Brahms pieces are often choral and performers are forced to play at least five octaves um, more vigorously. Now in this piece, performers will have to experience seven octave ranges and play the highest G sharp to the lowest C note. This gives performers an important acquaintance with all the keys and ranges. The first two notes in this piece, therefore, should be played with both hands. Performers need to pay attention to also the sign loco, that's L-O-C-O, -O, and such and such. So that means that the actual note, actual range, so only the, the first bar, only the C note is affected by the octave sign. So I will demonstrate the first two bars. So this and the local E flat. And local D and the highest F sharp with forte. and lift the pedal. In addition, performers should be directed to give special attention to the color produced by such extreme intervals. This is another important element of contemporary piano music, where performers need to be brought to an awareness of and sensitivity to different nuance nuances of sonority that the piano instruments is capable of uh, producing. When performers are, are in this unique world of sound, nuance and color, the presence of the common notion of melody is not always necessary in the music. This piece is a little bit long, so I would play just maybe the um, first line.
simple sonority that produces with the uh, all ranges of the keyboard. The last piece of six Sheptis is an extension of sound exploration. My request for this piece was to incorporate playing clusters and harmonics. They are all new to the classical, um, uh, these are the all new to the classically trained pianist. The piece begins with flashy harmonics techniques. The left hand square notes are again to be pressed silently, while the right hand chords are played with sharp accent. The after effect is a beautiful echoing harmonic sound. If I just demonstrate. So this F sharp on the left hand, it's a square note, so you don't produce a sound, just press silently. And then you play this uh, three notes. <coughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> As you can hear that all the uh, notes that the I am pressing on the left hand, that's uh, creating the harmonics when I uh, play the right hand. In bar three, the unique harmonic sound is topped off by the cluster. So this is that. So this indicates just the uh, approximate range of the notes that will be pressed. And um, so, <coughs> I would use the uh, palm and <coughs> things like this. However, in bar four, the regular keyboard sound projected by the five note chords becomes so refreshing after the introduction to the two new piano sounds. Again, the piece is organized in simple ABA form and round off by a fascinating new piano sound. So if I demonstrate whole piece. As you may have noticed by now, these short contemporary pieces actually demands a lot of expressiveness from the performers. The piece gives um, performer, young performers a chance to reflect on their interpretation of the music, both musically and emotionally. These new pieces of six Sheptis are an especially great introduction and a preparation for students entering the contemporary piano techniques. Moreover, these piano pieces finally allow performers of any technical level to play and enjoy contemporary piano music and can fully stand alone as a small concert repertoire. I have uh, used them with my students and the results were excellent. And most of all, students enjoy them 
and uh, gain confidence in their playing. So before students attempt any big contemporary repertoire, these are a good first step for them to study. And then I hope uh, you'll be able to appreciate more fully the wonderful new sonority that the contemporary composers are searching after. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yoko. That was a, a terrific uh, lecture and, and example of, of six really wonderfully written piano pieces that, as you say, <laughs> short but also uh, wonderful, wonderful um, pedagogical um, examples. And also for, for many professionals, too, to play, as it sounds like you have on a few occasions. Um, what year were these pieces written? Um, uh you have to ask Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the, um, that's actually, it's in a first. 2003, okay. Yeah, 2003, that's right. So, so yeah, I, I um, would love to welcome a question and answer mm -hmm. uh, session, but I thought I'd ask you something, of a question of my yes. own first. Um, so you mentioned that um, your students have had a really kind of favorable reaction to stepping up, for example, and plucking a string. <laughs> yes. They note that it's a cool thing to do. Yes. Have you found uh, generally a, a positive response when you've when you've prescribed some of these pieces to your students? In the beginning, no. <laughs> That's, uh, they they are curious, but uh, first of all, it's very difficult for you know for young performers to really know how to s practice yeah. and uh, how to go by. So during the lesson that uh, we talk about, you know, that uh, the steps of the practicing that. Um, but uh, once that the they knew what they can do and, and then that uh, it's a really huge difference that's that would make, um, they really enjoy at the end that uh, the performance of those pieces and uh, showing off to other st music students <laughs> at the university. Terrific, mm -hmm. terrific. I'm going to throw it out to the floor. Does anyone have any questions for Yoko? Yes, Chris. Yes, I'll just bring this over to you. This is just to follow up on Adam's question, actually. Do, have you found that this has sort of sparked a curiosity in the students? Like, has it led to them um, performing more contemporary rep repertoire or searching out um, things that maybe explore these particular techniques? Yes, that uh, um, particularly like atonal contemporary music that, uh, um, you know, there are lots of uh, beautiful tonal music that's written also in the 20, 21st century, but uh, atonal music is something that the whoops that, uh, you know, st students or young uh, performers would uh, have a little timid reaction to it. So this is where that I really wanted to uh, bring them to the, that dimension. And uh, this is why that, uh, so atonal music, um, well, first of all, no melody. You know, usually students will say, "Oh, there is no melodies." And um, but um, some of the pieces, that's really the sonority is very important. And so um, I can teach them that the how to listen to the sonority, how to bring the sonority. Other thing is that um, piano is a very interesting instrument. So it's, uh, you know, especially 20, 21st century composers are really exploring what they can do with that. So inside the, inside the keyboard is one thing, but uh, even pressing the notes and you know, all, all type of things. So, so those are the things that I really wanted to uh, introduce my students to that uh, kind of piano technique, um, as well as you know, Czerny and, <laughs> and Chopin <laughs> and all those difficult ones. But uh, this, this kind of atonal music associate um, technique is all uh, important. Mm -hmm. Great. Are there any other questions? I oh, yes. Great. Um, Brendan, here. I, I'll, I'll give you this. Okay. When it comes to some of that inside the piano stuff, um, for this piece and others as well. Are there any, I guess, don'ts um, when you're inside the piano that might damage the instrument? I imagine there's some, but especially just things. Well, that's uh, yeah. um, 
you know, that when John Cage first started with this uh, prepared piano, that was a little bit difficult because he would, you know, require that uh, putting the screws <laughs> and you know, all those things inside keyboard. And then that was certainly, you know, a little bit concerning, right, that uh, for the instruments. But these days, um, um, lots of composers I that I that I played that uh, they're experimenting inside, but not necessarily, you know, go that ex extent. You, as I said, you just pr press the notes, and then you know that's already, you know, things like this, and that has nothing really to harm the strings or anything. So. Um, I don't, uh, I didn't uh, really uh, come across that all the uh, um, things that I had to worry about too much. But uh, look at the uh, John Cage piece <laughs> and then maybe, you know, try not to do <laughs> too much of that. <laughs> and yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Yes, Unsen. Usually, how long did it take for students to fully master each piece? And compared to traditional repertoires, um, did it take longer or shorter? Well, these pieces actually um, doesn't take you know that that, that uh, doesn't take long because that was the, the intention as well. This is why that I asked Robert to write just one page. The first piece was uh, two pages, but <laughs> one page and uh, one minute, you know, and he goes to two minutes. But uh, so that's maximum. Um, because again, uh, my students uh, in a music program, that's a traditional music program, so they have to, to study all the uh, important uh, traditional repertoire as well. So um, I they are not in a master's or PhD doing the contemporary music, you know, focus. So I did. I understand that situation. Then uh, um, this piece, really, one semester and uh, just a time here and there that uh, we work on it together. And then that won't take, you know, one hour lesson, maybe ten minutes, and that won't take long. Um, but uh, after three months, that uh, definitely they feel very, very comfortable. And then that's the kind of also the request that I had uh, to the composer, so that. Uh, because there are just tons of beautiful uh, contemporary piece uh, music written, uh, piano music, in here that uh, we have a tons of <laughs> scores. That uh, this is the Canadian Music Center. So, um, but as I said, um, it's a little bit difficult for students who never play atonal music or contemporary music to jump on those scores. And so, yeah, this is that. Uh, yeah, it won't take long. And so if you write like a one-page piece, that uh, maybe <laughs> bachelor students uh, may be able to, yeah, tackle. And then that's a great uh, initiative as well, that open up their universe to different dimension. Yeah. Yes. Another question. Um, I, I I guess like this piece is, I would say it's pedagogically driven piece, which is so amazing um, because there are so many large contemporary pieces that are not um, always, you know, like it to give it to a student, you know, to have that stamina to play. It is not always feasible. Um, I'm wondering if you're in your experience, Yoko, through teaching is if there are other pieces um, that are, you would say, are good pedagogic pedagogically driven pieces as well to yes, introduce. Yes, uh, yeah, I'm glad you asked. Repertoire. Yes, that uh, actually um that uh, well older generation composers such as Bruce Mather mm -hmm. and uh, Brian Cherney um e John Beckwith and those generation they actually publish some uh, piano pieces that's specifically targeted to young performers mm -hmm. uh that was published and um and then the kind of stop published and then it was a little bit difficult to get in get in touch but again, through Canadian Music Center here, that uh, I'm sure uh, you can get to the uh, the score eventually. Um, also, that uh, I I am kind of just uh, starting the the uh, research on those pedagogical piano pieces written by Canadian composers, and just my first uh, initial call 
for information uh, through Canadian Music Centre. There are, yeah, that uh, composers that uh, writ you know writing for young performers that in mind. So uh, I just hope that uh, those pieces would be uh, would have a little more exposure, so that uh, all the piano teachers, local piano teachers, all of um, would know, not just uh, depending on the uh, RCM uh, grade books, mm -hmm. <laughs> because they are already a little bit too difficult, some of them. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for even a little more, technically a little bit more lower, mm -hmm. however, without compromising the contemporary music universe that mm -hmm. uh, composers can bring. Um, so yeah, definitely, uh, actually, some are are great and wonderful. And uh, actually, Brian Cheney's uh, pieces I recorded on uh, one of my CDs. So yeah, you'll, s you'll hear that. Thank you. I think that might be all the questions for this morning. Yoko, I'm really pleased that you mentioned the resources here at the CMC, mm -hmm. um, and it's a good opportunity to thank the Canadian Music Centre uh, for supporting our initiative with the, the Composer Symposium this weekend. Uh, it's an integral space to making music in this country, and uh, here at the National Office, we've had two of our four events over the weekend. That's true. Um, so a special thanks to the Ontario Regional Office for, for all their support and uh, hosting the live stream today on the pl yes. this platform. Thank you. And the SOCAN, perhaps the SOCAN. I'd also like to thank uh, the Ontario Arts Council uh, for their support in um, a touring grant for Yoko Hirota to be presented here uh, this morning as well as on Friday evening for her solo recital, to the SOCAN Foundation and to ProPurchaser.com Inc. for uh, underwriting our videography this weekend. Thank you. Please well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please join us again. Uh, as aside from being... Uh, uh, around and, and busy on full moons. We also uh, do things on other days of the of the month as well. So if you can't catch us tonight at Bunker Lane, please uh, find us on a live stream with Instagram at the Piano Lunaire. And um, uh, I think that it's uh, it's been a wonderful uh, opportunity to to get together and to learn about all sorts of things piano contemporary. There's lots more to learn and there's lots more to to explore. So uh, uh, we look forward to welcoming you again soon. Thank you.